On this episode of Game Design, we're going to be discussing two different forms of game challenges, Iron Man modes and the metagame practice of safe scumming. Both of these have their very own unique brands of rewards and punishments, and to illustrate them, we'll be using XCOM and Fire Emblem as examples. But in order to understand the gravitas that these modes entail, we need to discuss some of the central mechanics of the games themselves. These games focus on the concept of having a small army of units that are permanently removed from the game if they die. This is further compounded by the fact that you don't have an endless supply of units to toss onto the battlefield. In Fire Emblem, you are only given units at specific story intervals, with opportunities to, uh, make units. The opportunity to even have these children can be thrown away if the potential parent dies, which means you effectively lose out on two units in the game. Fire Emblem basically turns into a weird dating simulator halfway through the game, as your only source of new units comes from forcing characters to have babies for the explicit purposes of catapulting their children headlong into war. It kind of brings a new meaning to the term child soldier. In the newly released three houses, you can gain units by recruiting other students and fellow faculty members by spending time with them. So, in addition to permanently losing out on units, you also lose out on the strong personalities of the characters and their interpersonal interactions with one another. When a Fire Emblem character dies, you feel the weight of their absence. In XCOM, the player can always hire costly and extremely weak recruit units, but the grind to get them to a position where they won't be killed instantly is a pain in the ass from both the combat and resource perspectives. Losing units in XCOM will leave you at a severe disadvantage as the enemies only continue to get stronger while you try to catch up. Losing a unit in either of these games is a huge emotional blow as the character you've spent countless hours nurturing is just dead and they're not coming back. This is where Iron Man and safe scumming come into play. Iron Man is one of the harshest difficulty modes out there, as it prevents players from being able to reload to previous safe states. What this ultimately means is that every single movement and decision is permanent. If you make a bad move, you're stuck with that consequence. This death permanence changes the way that you play the game, as players, if given the option, will opt to choose cautious tactics, such as slowly advancing through the battlefield while maximizing on defensive strategies. The most hilarious way this manifests can be seen how the majority of players in the 2012 XCOM would use the reactionary overwatch ability every single turn at the expense of speed. This strategy was thrown out the window with the game's sequel, as the developers put a timer on the majority of missions in order to force players into making risky decisions, such as rushing into unknown territory and leaving their troops open to enemy fire. It becomes a balancing act of staying safe and finishing the mission in time, and with the Iron Man mode on, the player becomes embroiled in the tension of knowing that deadly consequences are all around them. Fire Emblem also enjoys forcing players into making risky decisions through the tactics of placing additional objectives that the player must rush to complete, such as reaching markers, defending mission critical characters, spawning enemies on your flank, or splitting party members far away from one another. Multiple character deaths are inevitable in Iron Man, with each one having devastating detrimental effects to the integrity of your entire save game. Having to rebuild your team requires extensive time and resources, as well as babysitting vulnerable units until they manage to gain experience. New units in XCOM have the health points of a newborn baby. I slipped on an ice cube and got covered in boo boos. And weaker units in Fire Emblem can't even put a dent in most enemies. Bringing weaker forces into battle for the purpose of gaining experience is always a risk, as you have to halt the already difficult strategies that you're undertaking in order to allow for your trainees to get their pot shots in while they can. And all this effort can be stripped away in an instant. An entire half of XCOM is dedicated to managing money, intel, research, construction, engineering projects, radio towers, and so much more. These all directly rely on the same resources and time investments as your soldiers, as they exist within the same complex of the intermixed economy. Losing units in the combat sections of the game is a direct detriment to management tasks, as it forces you to pull your already stretched thin resources. Managing your soldiers and base is a careful balancing act that is only aggravated by story progression, becoming more difficult with each passing in game day. Newer and tougher enemies get introduced the longer you delay the process progress, as well as additional bonuses to the enemy army being granted at regular intervals. Managing your base can be just as stressful as the combat with Iron Man turned on, as making a bad investment early on can either delay story progression significantly, or leave your soldiers weak and vulnerable, which can lead your entire army being wiped out. While there isn't much in the story department in regards to your XCOM units, it still hurts like hell to see a soldier that you've invested in be killed off in an instant. This can be amplified if you spent the time to customize them. A popular trend in XCOM is to name 
name characters after people you've known in real life, which can lead to them being called at 3 in the morning with the terror breaking news that they've been murdered by aliens. The pain of losing a character is only worse than Fire Emblem, as the entirety of the downtime between battles revolves around your units having conversations and relationships with one another. Remember that child soldier you recruited? He's the kid that stood up against the murderous bandits that massacred the majority of his village. You take him under your wing and try to level him up, only for him to be cut down by a random enemy. Or what about poor Quiet and Shy Kellum, the big beefy suit of armor that you rely on for being a dedicated tank? He can get blasted by mages without ever gaining the recognition or respect of his peers. Were you shooting for two characters to get married and have a kid together? They can meet tragedy right before their proposal, leaving the guilt of an unfulfilled romance on your shoulders. The Iron Man modes in these games are what make them so enjoyable, as the death permanence, investments, and forced risks place the player into a constant state of stress and paranoia over their saved game and characters being subjected to complete utter chaos with every move they make. Let's compare this to another excellent strategy game, Mario Rabbit's Kingdom Battle. The same feeling of tension with every possible move isn't present in Rabbit's because there's no permanent risk to the integrity of the rest of your playthrough. No units investments or stories to lose out on, if you fail a mission you can just restart on the spot. Another game that revolves around the concept of permadeath is State of Decay, which tasks the player with building a community of survivors to fight the zombie horde. Losing a character in an instant is a constant risk as taking the risk of searching something fast can bring an entire horde through the one entrance. You can even send your characters into a friend's world in order to help them out and find more locations for resources but you can run the risk of screwing up your own game in the process. The intensity of Iron Man modes in these games is only magnified by the fact that the average game length to beat them is over 30 hours. If you mess up halfway through the game, you lose 15 entire hours of progress. I barely scraped by in Conquest, with only 3 of my total 28 units left alive at the end of the game. The intensity I felt in the battle was beyond imaginable, and simply isn't able to be replicated without the constraints of Iron Man. Three Houses gives you a built-in cheat with its Divine Pulse mechanic, as it allows you to wind back time, just in case things don't play out the way you intended. It kinda goes against the appeal of the game, you're better off just ignoring it. Iron Man modes create an immersive gaming experience that forces players to carefully weigh every possible risk, knowing full well that they'll be punished for any mistakes. However, there is another way to play these games, with the practice of save scumming, and admittedly it's not actually an intended way to play, as it's instead a metagame option that players have to create for themselves. With Iron Man turned off, the player is free to abuse the save game system in order to beat levels by metagaming losses or outright not even getting a scratch. Granted, almost any game with a save feature and decision can abuse this such as taking pot shots in Half-Life 2 when you have no more health resources or reloading when you fail a pickpocket attempt at Skyrim. You have committed crimes against Skyrim and her people. What say you in your defense? Hey, what's up, bro? What you calling a nigga? With safe scumming, you're free to scout out entire missions without any fear of repercussions since you can just reload and retain the knowledge of what's on the map. For example, if combat encounters don't turn out the way you want them to, you can just reload and turn and try different strategies. This also applies to investments. If it doesn't pan out the way you thought it would, you can just go back and fix it. This becomes its own metagame that is enjoyable in its own right, as you emulate movies like Happy Death Day or Edge of Tomorrow in which you can't complete the mission until you solve a puzzle keeping everybody alive. XCOM 2 actually counters this by having predetermined outcomes upon autosaves. Let's say you miss a shot against an enemy and try to reload the save in hopes of the percentages weighing in your favor until you get the desired result. XCOM 2 will have the results of your attempt always be the same, thus forcing players to actually change their tactics instead of allowing them to just constantly quick save and quick load until the percentages play in your favor. While this is meant to combat save scummers, it actually just encourages the fun kind of save scumming instead of the explicitly cheap ones. Fire Emblem combats save scumming by not allowing players to save any safe states mid-battle, meaning that if you lose units and you want to start over, you'll have to restart the entire mission. This wouldn't be a big deal if the story missions weren't brutal challenges challenges that can take over a half an hour to complete. You can be stuck on a single mission for hours as you try to make sure everyone stays alive, with players more often than not cutting their losses at a certain point. At an emotional level, players will be forced to pick and choose who they're willing to let go of. Making this decision to allow the death of a character is oddly its own meta form of immersion. Is this as fun as Iron Man? Well, that's for you to decide, as they're both fun in their own unique regards. Iron Man gives you the tension of permanent consequences and a more emotional immersive experience, while save scum creates an added puzzle layer to the game.